Chapter 12 They pushed him back to his feet and whispering quickly among themselves. And this is the part where things went a little blurry. Embarrassed, white through a punch that landed solidly on my chin. The shock of pain blasted through my body, and everything went bright white for a second. The next thing I knew, I was on the floor of the hallway, laying in the middle of a circle of shouting kids, yelling something about a fight. I felt a sharp pain from my lip. As I stood up, I rubbed my fingers across my mouth. Wyatt's punch must have busted my lip open. Blood was all over my fingertips. All I wanted to do was punch him back. Everything inside me boiled with anger, and suddenly the entire world was painted red. I spit in the floor and saw Zoe's backpack lying next to me. She was also standing in the crowd of shouting students, but she was standing perfectly still. She looked sad. I glanced back at Wyatt as he landed another punch right into my gut. I immediately felt like puking. As I clutched at my stomach, I was the new kid at school, scrawny and dorky, and I was getting my butt kicked in front of everyone. Wyatt was going to win the fight no matter how hard I fought back, so I did the opposite of I wanted to. I decided to let him win. Standing again, I looked at him. He was bouncing around like some kind of karate master, with his hands in the air, waving them back and forth in front of his body. I smiled because it looked like he was playing with one of those puppets attached to string. What are they called? Oh, yeah, marionettes. Another punch from Wyatt met with my cheek this time. I saw it coming, but didn't even try to block it. Why bother? Everything was my fault anyhow, so maybe I deserved a proper beating. And then the crowd started to calm down a little. Wyatt kept dancing and breathing heavily, occasionally letting out a wah the way Bruce Lee did on those old movies. He was so engulfed in the moment that he didn't even realize everyone had stopped cheering. Suddenly, I realized what was happening. Somehow, in this moment, I had become the bigger man. By refusing to fight back, I was taking a stand of my own. I was standing up to a filthy, rotten bully, and it gave me strength. I watched as he threw a kick into the air. Punches are one thing, but getting kicked is a whole other level of ouch. His foot landed on my arm, scorching pain down my spine. I wasn't sure how much more of this I could take, many more of this I could take, but I returned to my position in front of him. Fight back, Wyatt yelled. The frustration in his voice was clear. He swung a right hook at me, but this time I dodged it by leaning backwards. I won't. You're not worth it. If I fight, then you win. If I turn this bag into the office, then you win. If I get caught with it, then you win. The only way for me to stop this is if I refuse to play along with your manipulative games. All I should have done was walk away from the beginning. But I can't do that now, can I? I'm stuck here. So the best thing to do is refuse to fight back. From the corner of my eye, I could see Zoe smile. It was a proud smile. Hit me, Wyatt screamed again as he threw another hook. I dodged it as I did before. One of his ninja minions put their hands on his shoulders. Come on, man, this is getting weird. Let's just get out of here. Several of the other ninjas agreed. Wyatt swung around and slapped the kid in the face. Don't tell me what to do, and don't you ever touch me. The ninja leader flung back around with his arms swinging wide. It moved too quickly for me to back away. All I could do was flinch. But the punch never landed. I pried my eyes open and saw a furious Mr. Cooper dragging Wyatt away from me. The circle of students filled the entire hallway. He started it, Wyatt shouted as he kicked his feet. I caught him with the stolen money. Look at it. It all came pouring out of that red backpack. Mr. Cooper released Wyatt's arm and stepped forward, staring at the floor covered in cash. Everyone in the hallway was silent, which made it easy for Wyatt to keep shouting. That's Zoe's bag. They were in on it together. They both stole the money, and I caught them. When I confronted him, he started fighting me. I had to defend myself. Mr. Cooper pushed the change around with his foot until he saw the yellow sheet of paper that labeled it the food drive. Money, and he glanced around the hallway of students. By this time, several of the other teachers had joined, trying to push the kids away from the drop cash. 
Who is responsible for this? Mr. Cooper asked. I already said they were, Wyatt screamed, pointing at my cousin and me. Mr. Cooper raised his hand to Wyatt, instructing him to be silent. I didn't ask you. I asked them, he said, gesturing to everyone in the hallway. There is no way that any of Wyatt's and Ninja Clan would fess up to it, and if they did, who would believe them? Everyone else in the hallway knew nothing of Wyatt's plan, so all they were good for was a shoulder to shrug. The backpack was Zoe's, there was no doubt about that, and when they would get around to asking why it was in her bag, she would claim it was stolen. I doubt she would say anything about the ninjas, but even if she did, who in the world would believe her? I looked at my cousin. She had a worried look on her face as she glanced back. It looked like there were tears forming in her eyes. She was family, but more importantly, she was a friend. When Zoe was questioned about Emily's stolen purse, she immediately admitted her foul up. I took that as a lesson in integrity. I nodded at Zoe, and then I spoke. I took the money. Strangely, it was the ninja clan that gasped the loudest. I told you, Wyatt said, slapping his hands together. No, I took the money, Braden suddenly shouted as he stepped forward. Wait, what? Why did Braden just say that? No, I took it, Zoe shouted. And then another weird thing happened. Other students started stepping forward, confessing that they stole the food but drive money. I did, said a short girl with red hair. She was cute, but that's beside the point. It was me, said one of the taller students. I took the money, said yet another. I watched as several of the ninjas stepped forward and did the same. I can't imagine why it was too happy that they were doing it. Wyatt's face grew bright red as he clenched his fists again. They took the money, he screamed as he jumped at me. Mr. Cooper caught him by his collar and pulled him back instantly. The coach pushed the, pushed the ninja leader into the doorway of the front office and then turned around. I don't know who did this, but at this point it's clear that Wyatt had something to do with it. At the moment, the money is returned, which is more important than who took it. I think most of all, we're just thankful.